Universal Peace Federation UPF, Austria in cooperation with the permanent mission of the State of Eritrea to United Nations in Vienna. United Nations Correspondent Associations and the Horn of Africa Peace Initiative hosted a panel discussion on the 3rd of November 2017, Beyond Refugee Crisis and Human Trafficking, Perspectives for the Youth in the Horn of Africa, with a special focus on Eritrea. The discussion was opened by the President of the Universal Peace Federation, Dr. Peter Heider. He welcomed the guests and gave a brief introduction on the general objectives of the event. On the opening remarks, Dr. Peter Heider said that his organization has hosted a number of events, but the present one is unique in its content. He thanked Mr. Abdulkader Hamdan for his efforts to make this happen. After the opening remarks, the audience were given the opportunity to see a short video on achievements of the government of Eritrea in laying down the basic fundamental infrastructure. And we don't do it for sure off. Um, beyond refugee crisis and human trafficking perspective for the youth in the whole of Africa with a special focus on Eritrea, Mr. Adam Osman, political and legal officer and first secretary at the embassy and permanent mission of the state of Eritrea to the United Nations in Geneva. He was, as I told, former head of the legal service of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the state of Eritrea. He will reflect on general human rights issues, perspective, the experience learned during the last six years, which Eritrea was subjected to special procedure and on the conduct of the business of the Human Rights Council. Why are we in this kind of situation? Because if you don't know the, 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 the past history, you, you are no more somebody who knows who is who and you, you don't know where to go. So uh, I think the coastal states of the Horn of Africa are located in a very strategic location that give them the full control of one of the main maritime routes, trade routes of the world, the Babel Mandab connecting the Indian Ocean from Somalia to the Red Sea and then through the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea. So this strategic location of this coastal state, the coastal states, I repeat because it is intentional, is exactly something, and they float over a wells. And this <laughs> made them the target of external interventions. And on that issue, those external powers were trying to search for somebody who can serve that, that purpose. And that was the regime in Ethiopia who could not accept and do not accept a landlocked country. That's, I think, the main reason for the whole Horn of Africa to become, and to, to, to become the source of conflict, to become this kind of volatile horn. And the result was an exchange and a compromise of those superpowers. This we can also prove it because Mongusu Haile Mariam, if you remember, was the agent of the West and the East at the same time. You can imagine now who could serve was... He stated in his presentation that there is strong need to look at the history of the Horn in order to have a proper analysis of the present and the future opportunities and challenges. Mr. Adam Usman underscores that Eritrea is the product of such struggle and will continue to put the necessary infrastructure in its social justice-driven developmental programs. Speaking on the migration issue, he says that Eritreans were driven by a strong pull factor facilitated by networks operating for mostly the camps in Ethiopia and some of them operating in countries of destination. He also called upon the world community to shoulder its responsibility to pressure on Ethiopia to evacuate the territories of Eritrea in accordance to the final and binding rulings that could ultimately be helpful in the relations of the country towards a better harmonized Horn of Africa. He also highlighted the economy growth and the possibility for investors. He then responded to a range of cautions posed by participants. Dr. Walter Lischem, who was former Austrian ambassador to Chile and Canada, who also served as head of the Department of International Organizations, spoke on his decades-long interest about Eritrea, touching on the geopolitics surrounding many issues. I grew up with the dream of my grandfather, I would say, because 
He, born in 1867, wanted to get to know the other world, First World War, interwar period, Second World War, he died. I, as a five-year-old, said, I will do it. And with a group of friends, we, we started to travel, but our highest objective was to go to the Horn of Africa, to Ethiopia, to Eritrea. And uh, this is what we did uh, in 1960. With an old, in fact, we bought a scrap iron place for $20, a car, and repaired it for a year and got it admitted. And drove with this car all the way down to Aqaba, then with a boat to Masawa, and from there into Asmara and south to uh, Addis Ababa and the Avashda Valley and up to Aksum and so on to Sudan then and up north. But anyway, this was my, it was sort of a, it became a key uh, guiding objective in my life. And of course, nothing more beautiful could happen to me but to become an economic affairs officer in the United Nations Secretariat in New York with missions. And one of the first missions was, in 1971, I worked in water resources management. It was my, my field of responsibility. But uh, if I may just say one thing that already then fascinated me about Eritrea was the pluricultural, pluri-identity presence in Asmara. The relatedness, I mean, and if you look at the history of Eritrea, uh, there you have the roots for Eritrea's future role in the world, because it has a relatedness to many different worlds, be it the Ottoman Empire, be it Italian colonial power, be it the American and British, uh, global resp uh, responsibility leadership, uh, be it the Arab-speaking world uh, in Africa and on the other side of the Red Sea. And there were emigrants coming from Yemen to the Horn of Africa. Anyway, so it is really a region, a country of incredible richness. And one other dimension is also there. Eritrea is a pluri-identity society. And it has been able to live in societal cohesion, this plurality. Linguistic, ethnically. Uh, and this is a source of enrichment for the government also, and for its role in the international community, reaching to Europe, the United Nations, the world. Asmara could become a human rights city and would just underline the already existing societal cohesion. And it could be lived and exampled. He advised Eritrea to benefit from its cohesiveness and proposed to establish human rights cities to combat accusations. He shared his views that Eritrea is in the right path that needs time and space. He also spoke on the failure of the international community to enforce the final and binding ruling EEBC. In General Abdullah Sharif, President of the United Nations Correspondent Association, UNCAF, and co-founder of the Horn of Africa Peace Initiative, who is from Sudan, shared his personal experience on migration when he came from Sudan in early 1970s. He also gave some facts and figures on migration and use. For me, to speak about my uh, private or my, uh, what I experienced in my life, because as a child in Sudan, we had two neighbors from Germany and also from Italy. And as a child, I asked Mr. Klatt, who came from Germany after the war, Mr. Klatt, why you came from Germany to work here in Sudan? So he was telling me, 
my income here in Sudan is better than in Germany. So that time it was not also issue for our generations to go to Europe because you have to convince your family. And there were a lot of opportunities inside the country. So anyhow, I remember that was at the beginning of the, or the middle of the 70s, when I, what, well, that was the first time for me to come out of the country. And I came to Hungary. It was the beginning of winter. And my experience, we were welcomed very, very well with flowers, with kisses on the cheeks, and coming out, <laughs> I was surprised, you know, to see the people for the first time European, and I see the smoke coming out when they were talking. A young university student, Ms. Fortune Usman from Somalia, also shared her personal experience. I was born in Mogadishu, Somalia, but I came to Austria when I was seven years old. I was a refugee, like a Somalian kid, and I came to Austria with my mom and as the second eldest of five children with her. I have now lived the last 20 years. Oh, thank you. I've lived the last 20 years now in Austria, and now I am um, an Austrian citizen. And being part of the Somali diaspora, I would like also um, to share the experience of how it is to live abroad. And also, I would like to change the, the media perception of Somalia because Somalia is currently known as, as the main example of a failed state. But things are changing, and they are changing quickly, also in Somalia, and Somalia is doing very well right now. See, Africa was open to Europe. Now the history cards have changed. Now it is for us to be open and helpful. Well, institution building is a complex process. In fact, it is defined by the development of societal capacities. See, what we are living in democratic societies is the deverticalization of command and obedience structures through horizontal patterns of interaction. Uh, among the citizens and between governmental structures and the citizens. This requires time. If we look at the history of democratic development in the world, if we look to South America, if we look to Austria and other countries in, in Europe, this has not been learned in one generation. It required more, in fact, you need one generation to look critically at the failures of the preceding generation of your parents. And that then gives you the spirit and the vision for where to go. But um, ultimately, what is needed, and I come back to my topic, is societal development for democracy. And if, and if we talk about peace, let me talk also about the peace between Austria and Eritrea. And I want to join this with thanks to Peter and to all of you here. It starts with knowledge. If you know about the other, you understand the other. If you understand the other, you have a capacity for cross-identification. And cross-identification provides you with solidarity capacity. And solidarity makes peace, that's it. Finally, participants who were given a sector to pose their cautions express their satisfactions. They say that the forum has enlightened them of the situations and challenge that the Horn continues to face and requested that such events be repeated in the future. 
In his closing remarks, Dr. Peter Heider stressed the importance of the forum in bringing together the stakeholders from all fields to address and share their experience, as well as reflect the reality in Eritrea and the Horn of Africa and explore further opportunities. The event was followed by a dinner that was prepared by the Eritrean community in Vienna that also created an opportunity to further informal discussions.